Hello, this is a crazy trucker from lifeisatrucker.com. What is holding you back? What is holding you back? Oftentimes, a lot of what is holding us back is simply in our minds or other things such as procrastination. And um, we may put off doing something for many reasons. It's easy to come up with, with excuses especially when we are chartering new territories, you know, something that is unfamiliar, something that we are not totally comfortable in doing. So then the next question is, well, how long will it take for you to get to that place? Obviously, if you do anything enough times, you will become more and more comfortable at it. And it's just fine to go that route if, you know, you have made goals and you have a specific time frame that you're working with and you are operating in line with those goals. Uh, as for me in the radio show, it was my goal to have the show. I didn't specify on when I would actually go live. So I created the show a few weeks ago. So how long am I going to keep putting off actually going live, trying to prepare to go live? You see what I mean? Because I want you to take these principles and see how you can apply those in your own life to different things that you may be putting off or the self-defeating thoughts that you may have to keep you from going forward in different areas, taking risk, trying things out, chartering new territory. You want to push yourself beyond the comfort zone. You want to take those risks. Don't be afraid of rejection. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the thoughts of others criticism the disagreement with your opinion hey this this is just all of my opinion but it is my opinion based on a lot of information that i have come across a lot of well a few books that i have read and a lot of audio tapes that i had listened to even go to youtube you know and look up things that are important to you for me it's about personal development making better decisions. So these are things that I've learned about. And now I wish to share what to me is the essence, the principles and the thoughts, the ideas that I have gathered from what I've been exposed to. And that's what you can do if you see there is a need to increase the level of belief in yourself. Expose yourself to information that is beneficial to you and that is in line with the things that you wish to make a reality in your life. And you see, um, <laughs> as long as, as you believe in yourself, the thoughts, the ideas, if you believe there is meaningful reason behind your actions, then you should be liberated by your choices in life. That includes putting yourself out there sometimes. That includes taking a risk. Some of the ways that you can gain that level of confidence is to expose yourself to information that empowers you, improves your thinking, deepens your belief, increases your creativity. It takes a little discipline. It takes some commitment, but it's a choice that you make every day. The question that you can ask yourself is, how do I spend my free time? And in what ways can I spend that time that would be of more value to me? Oh, who do you spend your time with? What do y'all talk about? I mean, do you spend all of your time getting high, talking about getting high, talking about your favorite artists, talking about Kim Kardashian or, 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 or Lindsay? How you say her name? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But do you do that with your time? Maybe some of those discussions should be about the class you saw at the local community college that might give you the edge you need in order to make some changes in your life. Or maybe you get together just to complain about not having enough money at the end of the month or to pay the bills you have. But who among you has introduced the idea of starting an online business, which doesn't take gas and takes less than $100 to start? I'm just saying. Just like you are what you eat, it is also true that you are what you believe. I once heard either Stephen Covey or Brian Tracy, he said, you become the average of your friends. 
Now think about that. That's powerful. That's a powerful realization. You know, the people that you spend most of your time around, you're going to find yourself most likely dead center in where they are in their lives. The mindset, you become that which you think about most often. If that is the focus of your mind, that becomes your reality. Just like the saying goes that we are a product of our environment. There's a lot of truth in that. In fact, it's totally true. But a lot of people limit what they see as their environment to, you know, the traditional, simple concept. It is much bigger than that. It's deeper than that. And it's all encompassing. The information that you expose yourself to, the people that you're around, all of the influence, the music that you listen to, what you choose to listen to, all of that makes up your environment. And guess what? Quite often, you are in a position to make choices on what that environment is. The problem is, too often, those choices we make are to spend our time in an environment that is not productive. That environment may even be counterproductive or destructive instead of spending our times to do things that would help better position us for moving forward. You see, we could be learning information that would uh, help you have a better relationship, help you learn how to make more money, help you know how to start a business, help you develop more confidence, help you become a more effective parent. We could be learning all of this stuff. I mean, uh, the possibilities of what you could be doing to benefit you are endless and free (laughs) because research is easier than ever. New things that you want to learn, you can go online and Google it and learn the basics and, in many cases, a lot of higher level information about that thing. So, you know, everything is at our fingertips in order for us to take advantage of. So what's really holding you back? You see, that is, is the question. That is the topic of this show. And the reason why is because sometimes people have an illusion that it is something else holding them back when really nothing is holding them back. Now I can go on and on about the possibilities. They're endless, but let's move forward. If we don't like what we see in the mirror or if we don't live how we would like to live, we can't blame it so much on someone else. Everyone has the potential to make for themselves a wonderful happy, prosperous life. First, you must believe in this reality. Second, you must write what you desire for your life. And then you must choose to spend your time brainstorming to figure out what steps it takes to make it a reality. So back to believing in the reality. What do you believe about yourself? You need to understand that that many people assume that they cannot do things or be a certain type of person or achieve certain goals or reach certain levels in life. They assume this, we'll put it this way, because they make this assumption and they don't believe that this life is available to them, they can't conceive of that reality. So how can they build upon those types of thoughts? You can't build upon something that's not there. So they shy away from difficult things, avoid new endeavors, don't like taking chances. And in addition, they tend to freeze up um, when they're facing challenges in life. You ever heard of the saying, uh, making a mountain out of a molehill? That's how people who don't believe in themselves see challenges in life. They are huge. Some of the Things that you see other people knocking out of the way every day like it's nothing. A person with limiting self-belief will look at that same challenge and turn around, giving up before the battle was even on. 
In other words, they're not in the game. Not in the game of life. So how can you win? Well, you can't. Not like that. But you can win because you can change the way that you look at life. It starts with a positive mental attitude, a different way of viewing life. Now, you may have heard some people criticize positive thinking, saying that it is unrealistic. Um, It's deeper than that. And I'll give an example of what I'm speaking of when I say positive thinking. Say you want to learn another language. In your mind, you say, I'll never be able to learn this language. This language sounds tough. I'll never be able to learn this language. But you go and enroll in class to learn the language. Now, it's good that you went and signed up for the class anyway, even though you didn't have the right belief in yourself because another group of people with limiting self-belief would have never even enrolled. They would have immediately dismissed the idea of it being possible to learn the language, therefore no longer entertain the thought. However, compare you with someone else who has never even considered the possibility of not learning the language. Their focus is on what it would mean to them once they do learn the language. There is no doubt about whether they can learn the language. Now, we can talk all day about why these differences exist. And it may start from childhood or what has transpired from then until the present time. But it doesn't really matter. What's important is anyone can overcome that self-defeating thought. Anyone can be that person that does not entertain the thought of failure, even though realizing that failure is a possibility. But it's just a consequence of trying. Failure is nothing but a step towards success anyway. If you fail, you just learn from it and you move on. Keep moving forward. The thought is focused on achieving, 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 achieving. Try it. Attempt. Go for it. Get it done. That's the attitude. And anyone can choose to have that attitude. It's a matter of being made aware of not having that attitude, realizing that if your attitude is opposite of that, you need to change it. Once you are made aware of this, you can work on it and work on it and work on it until it becomes natural to you. And your default mindset is of a positive nature as opposed to the negative thoughts that so many of us have in society today. Your change is in progress. Do you see the difference there? You got one person who would be in class, attentive and excited, anticipating the day that they'll be able to communicate with another culture. That's their vision, their vision of the future, while the other person is sitting in class, possibly daydreaming and thinking that they're there wasting time because they don't believe that they can learn the language. Serious difference. But let's continue. It's going to take you significantly longer to catch on than the person who says to him or herself, I can learn this language. I will learn this language. I can learn this language. People learn this language every day. So your mind will operate differently. You will pick up things at a different rate because your thoughts affect you. And that's the difference in positive thinking and negative thinking. And you have thoughts in your mind every day that are either negative or positive. And if you could train yourself to make those thoughts predominantly positive, no matter what the circumstances, then you are in a much better place to deal with life, whatever life brings you. You see, I'm here to tell you that this is a choice that you have. I'm here to tell you only that thought pattern limits you. It's sad, but we are not taught about the power of our minds. I want you to know that life is only limited by what you believe and what you believe you deserve and your actions towards that belief. Replace your I can'ts with I can and I will. Replace your negative thoughts and limiting self-belief with positive ones, realizing that you have unlimited potential. You are just as special as anyone else here on earth, and you were put here for a purpose. So the second part is, what do you desire for yourself? See, it is also the second problem. Something many of us learned as a child is to get a good job, to stay there, and to retire. That was a goal assigned to us, indirectly, of course. But 
I want you to erase all of that right now. What do you really want for your life? When do you want to retire from that job or from a job? Or do you even want a job for that long? I mean, what age do you want to retire at? You mean I don't have to work until retirement age, 65, 67, whatever it is? No, you don't. You don't have to work until whatever retirement age is. Not if you have a plan to do otherwise. You can retire at 35. You can retire at 50 if you want it bad enough. And if you save the money to do it. How much money? However much money you determine is necessary to leave the type of lifestyle that you want to live. The problem is we don't define that goal at an early enough age. It might be 35 before we learn about goal setting. It may be 50 before we actually take it serious and write something down. I believe that there is power in writing. I mean, studies have been done comparing people who have written out their goals to those who have not. Most people who have experienced high levels of success have written out their goals and they spend a majority of their time focused on achieving those goals. Now, how much do you think this influences their daily actions and how much protection do you think this gives them from outside influences? You think that would help them choose a better environment in order to um, help them move forward toward their goal? Of course it will. But I think there is a more spiritual quality in writing that provides a bridge or connection between self creativity and manifestation. In fact, I think it's therapeutic. It is for me, but I think it is to other people who may not even have the same passion for writing as I do. I think just the act of writing, uh, is seriously empowering to the person who writes. And I'm not talking about typing on the computer. I'm talking about writing, but the studies have shown that if you write down your goals, you write down your intentions. If you write down positive affirmations, statements that are meaningful to you about where you want to be, how you want to, how you want to be the person you want to become in the present tense and in specific statements, then it will assist you into actually bringing those things into reality in your own life. So write down your goals, write down a list of 20 things that you want to accomplish in life. Beside those 20 things, write down the number of years in which you wish to have it accomplished by. Make a, a separate list of your one year goals for your life and highlight the top three that are most important to you. Again, and remember what the studies show about writing. So don't cut any of this out. Just embrace it and do it and know that it's meaningful and that it will produce results. But out of those top three uh, highlight the one that is most important to you. Determine which one that if you complete in that one year will have the most positive effect in your life for putting you in a better position, for making you become the person you wish to become. Write that on a separate sheet of paper and you're going to brainstorm in order to write out the steps that is necessary in order for you to achieve that goal. Now... Now you have something tangible in front of you that gives you a reason to believe in the future that you will be in a whole new place. Now, every day you live with a purpose. You may look back and see that your life has been moving at a snail's pace. You might be in no better situation than you were two, five or ten years ago just getting by, feeling as if something was missing. So-so relationships, limited income, yo-yo emotions of happiness mixed with depression. You are about to fix all of that between now and next year. You will see amazing things happen in your life because not only do you have a destination that will make you proud, the journey there will enable you to grow. You will meet challenges, of course. <laughs> Making changes are not easy. 
And anything worth achieving, you know, is going to take a little sacrifice. It's going to take some tough choices. But these are the things that make you grow along the way. You will not only meet new challenges, but you will also meet new people. You will learn new things. You will build confidence. You will increase self-esteem. You will arrive at your destination as a new person. So what's holding you back, really? I mean, you hold the key. Now, it can be locked away. Yes, the key can be locked away. You say, well, how can the key be locked away? That's where it's been all this time. What can I do to unlock that joint? Well, we're well on our way to unlocking it, but there are some other things in life that could definitely put the mind in the bind because your mind is the key. Some of those things are not necessarily easy to overcome, but just like with anything else, they can be easier to overcome. The more you expose yourself to information about how to deal with it, then the easier any change in life becomes. What I am talking about now, though, is not bad habits, which can cause you problems, which can put the mind in the bind because other things may occupy your mind because of bad habits. For instance, smoking a pack of cigarettes every day could put you in a situation where you can't work out the way you should, or you can't do some of the things that you need to do. You can't get the rate that you need to on insurance. Suppose you're one of the people who, when you're at work, instead of doing the best job that you can do, you try your best to avoid working and do as little as possible. Now, you may get away with it for a long time, but your co-workers probably know this. They may have complained. Your boss probably knows this. They see there's a lack of productivity or lack of quality. But sometimes all it takes for a person to make a change is for the situation to change. The other, the big picture to change. We're in a recession. If you are a slacker at work, your actions are going to cause you to be the first one to get let go. And then let's go a little further with it. Guess who are the first people to complain when this happens? (laughs) You see, and they'll call the company wrong and everything. They've been done wrong and treated unfairly. No, what happened is a result of your own behavior, attitude. I'm telling you everything. It all matters, y'all. You know what I mean? So everything is connected. All the choices that we make are connected and comes back to us. The way we treat other people. It's connected to our lives and it comes back to us. It creates the environment in which we live. It creates the community in which we live. It creates the society in which we live. So if every person looked at it in this way and then tre- treated each other differently, then the world would be a better place. But the reality is that everyone on, is not going to do that. So you need to do what you can do in order to both improve how you deal with other people, but also in order to improve your level of resistance to all the negativity that may exist around you. But I'm not talking about the bad habits uh, when I say that your keys can be locked away. Your key can be locked away to reaching your potential. What I'm talking about here, because I talk about bad habits, so, you know, I'll talk about that on another, another totally separate show. Um, what I'm talking about here basically is hate, envy, resentment, anger, See, these things are poisonous to the mind and it holds up progress. It it can do more than just hold up progress. It can be destructive and often is. Many of us are just not mature enough to live above these things. The problem is each one hurts you more than anyone else. You have to let it go. All of them are poisonous. Research proves that hate, envy, resentment, anger are poisonous bottom line is you need to forgive yourself for all that you have done wrong whether it's to yourself or to other people and you've done some things wrong to yourself and may not even know it your limiting self-belief that's wrong but it's okay you know when once you realize that if you choose to do things differently you've made amends for that but how about when you make choices that that hurt you and put you in a position where you got to suffer paying extra bills, speeding tickets, higher insurance, health problems. If you repeatedly allow yourself to be in abusive relationships or you allow yourself to be mistreated, that's wrong. That's wrong. You're treating yourself wrong like that. 
So what you need to do is step out of that cycle and forgive yourself for all the harm that you have done thus far by living in that cycle over and over again about relationships. Why do you think you keep ending up in these relationships? What criteria are you using to choose someone to be in a relationship with? What are your values? What are the qualities that you're looking for? What are the characteristics that you're looking for? Maybe the reason you keep ending up with the wrong person is because you are choosing based on the wrong criteria. But first, you need to look at yourself and where you are in life. Are you even in the best position to entertain a relationship? That's a mistake a lot of people make. You really want to reflect on that and assess the situation. You can do a lot more if you got some goals you're trying to achieve, if you got some things that you're trying to change, if you're doing it solo. Solo for the rest of my life? Hold up. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, don't be alarmed. I'm not talking about you should be single for the rest of your life. What I'm saying is if you are not in a place where you have your goals set, you have your steps um, written down that you know how you're going to spend your time. If you don't have your thoughts organized, if you don't already have a plan and are currently working through that plan, then how much distraction do you want to come at you sideways while you're trying to organize your thoughts? And then as the relationship develops and your plan um, gets put into action, it changes up your schedule. It changes up um, the free time that you have. And then this person is telling you that, you know, this isn't what I got into and things have changed and it's not the same, you see. But if you wait, then you will be able to have a clearer mind on the things that you need to do without compromising that. And once you get into that pattern, then you figure out the free time that you have in order to spend on a relationship or to allocate towards a relationship when you run across somebody you can let them know um that you have limited amount of time and they can decide on whether or not that's compatible for them and if they are trying to change what you are saying and make you conform to what they want then you know that they care less about you than they do about themselves and that that's somebody that's not worth your time getting in a relationship with and you can spend your time focusing on your goals now if you meet somebody who is considerate enough and understand and support you in trying to move forward in life support you in trying to reach your goals then that is the type of person who is worthy of the little free time that you have left if that's what you want to do you see the difference that's all i'm saying a lot of people don't do this and a lot of people get turned around because they get in a relationship when they are better off waiting. And a lot of people never pursue their dreams. A lot of people never follow through. A lot of people never set goals. Let me tell you what ends up happening in some cases. Resentment builds up. All of a sudden, it's two, three years later. Uh, the couple has gotten married or there is a baby. And then the person who had the goals, had the ambition, starts developing resentment especially if things go wrong in a relationship during this period of time. His or her income uh, decreases or something happens or the job goes away or the money stops flowing, whatever. Or maybe you get pregnant or he gets locked up or you get pregnant and he gets locked up and you put your dreams off for a relationship. Things change and uh, now all of a sudden that person that had those goals and ambitions starts to second guess their decision to get involved. Now there's resentment. Now there's, I wish I woulda, coulda, I shoulda, and I never shoulda gotten involved. Now this resentment creates animosity in the relationship. Where's the relationship going to go? So did you really do yourself a favor by getting involved prematurely? Or would you have been better off waiting until you were in the process of pursuing your goals and then found somebody that was compatible for you during this process? Also, if you have not reached a certain level of acceptance of yourself, if you're not satisfied with who you are, 
you're not even in the condition to be in a relationship. Because how are you going to treat someone else right when you're not satisfied with yourself? So these are some things to think about. Get yourself right and you'll meet somebody when it's time for you to meet somebody. Or after you get yourself right, then you're available and you're open totally to meeting someone. And you won't be rushing. The right type of person will be attracted to who you are. It might be best to be a master at being a single, independent, emotionally stable person before getting into a relationship. Let's go. So you got to forgive yourself. You know, all of us make mistakes. We learn different things at different ages. And a lot sometimes we're not even responsible um, directly for what we are lacking. We just ended up in that place. See, all of us got to deal with the hands, got to live with the hands that we are dealt. And we got to learn how to navigate through that game using those cards of that hand, you know. And um, everybody has their advantages, their disadvantages. Everybody has talents and skills that are natural to them and that they pick up along the way. Yours may be different than somebody else's. So don't look at what's wrong in your life or the bad decisions that you've made and compare it to another person's life and feel like you've been dealt a bad hand. Everybody has been given some some cards they didn't want in their hands. You know what I'm saying? So forgive yourself for whatever situation that um, has taken place, whether you have done someone else wrong, whether you are beating yourself up for doing something that you wish you hadn't have done that's negatively affecting your own life. The thing is, we're going to change, right? Also, change how you act toward, oh, well, let me say this. That also means, though, that you need to forgive other people the same way. Just like if there are people you have done wrong and you need to forgive yourself and ask for forgiveness for that if you, you know, are dealing with these, these people and there's problems. But you also need to forgive people that have done you wrong. You need to keep in mind that a lot of the people that you have grudges against have no idea why you are mad at them. Now, part of the reason may be because the reason you are mad is all in your mind. Or it could be a lie that someone else made up. In other words, you may think that a person did this, that, and the other for one reason, and it may not be true, but yet you are mad at them for that. That happens quite often. So when you think about these things, you realize that the emotions you have inside is impacting you more than it's impacting the other person forgive my friend resentment jealousy most of us deserve exactly what we get out of life you're about to change everything for yourself so let that go and move on use your key to unlock the future you desire place your mind's focus on positive things like achieving your goals becoming a better person becoming a better parent becoming a better citizen we have to remember that all things are connected. For instance, how can you have a positive mindset if you have hate in your heart? How can you improve emotional health and ignore your body? How can you place money over people and expect people to treat you right? How can you stack your money if you worship material things? How can you be in a relationship with a quality person if you are not of equal quality? How can you enjoy life unless you love who you are. Happiness is hard to find for some people. It's because they are looking for it in all the wrong places. Happiness cannot be found, for it is not lost. It can be discovered, because it is already within. Happiness is nothing more than a choice. But in order to understand this concept, and to have the choice as an option to you, then you need to have a positive mental attitude. When you do, no matter what circumstances you go through, no matter what the situation is, it does not create a lasting depression. Isn't it wonderful to be that type of person that has a positive mental attitude? Smile and go make someone else's day. When you take responsibility for the direction of your life, you have the power to make the choices that bring forth 
all that you desire for you and your family. As long as you deserve those things that you desire because you make the choices that helps you to acquire. Look out now. I'm in rhyming mode. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh, that's a wrap.